Hello and welcome to the November edition of Fintech Monthly. We've partnered up with Braintree to bring you a special series of Fintech articles on payments, e-commerce and more. So make sure you check out our Fintech channel at techcitynews.com. generation lending company Ernest has raised a whopping $275 million in equity and debt financing. Ernest lends between $2 million and $5 million per day and the total dollar amount the company has loaned has increased 50 times over the past year. Of its products, Ernest's student loan business is its largest, followed by its lending business for personal loans. A fintech trade mission organised by UK Trade and Investment headed to Switzerland this month to promote the UK's fintech sector, attract business and boost business opportunities. The fintech companies selected for the trip included Innovate Finance and its members Bankable, Clear Macro, Credits and many more. Britain's fintech market generates 20 billion in annual revenue and over 44,000 people work in the sector in London alone. Visa Europe's Innovation Hub is teaming up with distributed ledger specialist Epifite on a proof-of-concept project looking into how the blockchain and Bitcoin can be used for international remittances. A report from the World Bank last year put the global amount of remittances in 2014 at $582 billion and estimated that migrants paid an average of 7.9% in fees on these money transfers. Could blockchain be the answer? Visas' experience as the largest payments network in the world could help create the solution. We asked Richard Gould of Rag Lawrence Graham & Co whether big companies like Visa can overcome bureaucracy and drive innovation by working with startups to improve financial processes. Or is it better to let startups take the lead? I'm not going to suggest that big financial institutions can't innovate. Actually, there are lots of examples in the market right now of them doing just that. UBS and other big banks, for example, have recently opened up blockchain labs. But the reality is the talent and the nimbleness of startups means that innovation disruption more easily sits there. And we have seen this case study play out in different sectors. The one I often talk about is the pharmaceutical industry. In pharma, 10 or 15 years ago, the big companies got to such a level that they really struggled to innovate at the level of the biotech companies that were getting the best young talent out of the universities. So they invested in them and then followed was a huge wave of M&A. I think that's exactly the fact pattern that we're going to see play out in the financial services industry over the next five to ten years. For more from Richard, check out his regular posts on techcitynews.com. Regulatory issues are set to be the biggest hurdles facing financial technology firms over the next year, according to a survey by Silicon Valley Bank. Of the 100 fintech entrepreneurs and investors surveyed, 43% expect this growing tide of red tape to be their biggest problem facing developing fintech companies. This was backed up by the British Bankers Association in a report called Winning the Global Race, which called for further support for fintech companies, which they noted are an increase increasingly critical part of the banking ecosystem. That's it for this month. Thanks to Braintree for hosting us at their offices. To find out more, head to braintreepayments.com and please make sure you join us next month for another FinTech Roundup.